There we are. So we are Project Appetite. Uh, we developed a restaurant finding app that we will tell you more about the features of, but let's introduce ourselves first. I'm David Ellis. Uh, I had music degrees in performance from the Oberlin Conservatory, but I got into coding thereafter through a lot of other musicians who likewise have uh, taken career plunges in software development. And here I am. Uh, Jordan? Yeah, hi, I'm Jordan Dyka. Uh... I went to the University of Buffalo where I got a bachelor's in electrical engineering and was exposed to programming uh, and a handful of undergraduate courses. And that's where my interest stems from. Hi, my name is Ghassan Haddad and I'm a graduate of the University of California, San Diego. Well, hi, my name is Isman Arakopa. I graduated from Stony Brook University with a bachelor's in mechanical engineering. All right, so I'm gonna kick it off and just explain to you a little bit about what our app was about. Um, so basically uh, our project is geared towards the indecisive user who has an appetite, um, but they can't decide where they want to go to eat. So they would use our app to filter restaurants based on uh, location, uh, cuisine and a radius and from there they can choose and find restaurants uh, that might inspire some inspiration of where they want to get some food uh, they can even check out um, reviews left on dishes at a particular restaurant and if they decide that they like that restaurant they could add it to their favorites list um, so now I'll demonstrate Uh, some of our features here. I'm gonna start off by registering as a new user. Just make up a email here and a password. And unfortunately, um, because of uh, Google Chrome's like they're trying to protect us. It won't let me connect to our, it won't let our app connect to our lo location, but this is a perfect opportunity to show our uh, drag and drop feature where I'll be able to drag my current loca or location of where I want to find places to eat. And I'm gonna go take it off to, you know, place I actually enjoy going all the time. If I could find it on the map, I'm sorry. That's a little part more. Yeah, there we go. So I'm gonna check out the Italian cuisine and just a generic radius and a rating. You know, I could adjust the rating if I wanted to and filter and here at Jojo Carloni's. That's a place I like to go to often. And add it to my favorites list and check out their menu. And it looks like we've got some people who've already left some reviews here. Uh, you know, their Arbiata, you know, a pasta dish. You know, if you like spicy, it's a good option. A chicken Jojo, if you like sour, that's a good option. We could check out the comments here. You know, somebody's left a comment. I can leave my own comment. Yeah. And just for demonstration purposes, I'll leave in a lower review to show um, that the rating will be updated. And I'll leave a comment. Oh, too spicy. I'll save it and see our rating updated from a five to a four. There must have been other ratings. It only changed by one point, but now you can see that my, my comment is in there. And Chicken Jojo, you know, you can do the same thing. Maybe I'll just leave a rating. You check out other restaurants. I don't know if anybody's left reviews for these other places, but, um, 
if you check out here on the map, you can actually see these um, fork and knife uh, emblems. And if you click on them, it'll actually show you the address of the locations that you have on your map. So here's the address for JoJo's. And let's say we wanted to, that we were gonna be in downtown Cleveland for dinner later. And we're really interested in like Japanese. Here we find a Japanese restaurant. I can add it to my favorites. Maybe I'll check it out, keep it for later. And now I'll show you guys our favorite restaurants. And these are the restaurants that I favorited. And I can check out, you know, what restaurant it is, give them a call, maybe make a reservation or, you know, get their address and have a good night at dinner. And if I decided I didn't really like Song's house, you go and unfavorite it and it disappears. And like I said, like, because of security and if it puts us back in Nigeria. But yeah, that's, that's our app. Um, I'll hand off to uh, back to David. Sure. So yeah, in terms of specifications, uh, a lot of the technologies that we used were technologies we learned here in Dev 10. So MySQL, Workbench, Java, using IntelliJ, Spring Boot, Mapito, JUnit Maiden. Uh, likewise, on the front end, with JavaScript, React, Bootstrap. Uh, but the big, well, and also Amazon Web Services and Docker for Deployment, but the big one that uh, we had to learn how to use and really ended up being the central component of this project was the Google Maps platform uh, with Maps.js API and Places API. And Gassan did a lot of uh, looking into that to see how it could be used. So I will, uh, if we can move to the next slide and Gassan can take it from there. Yeah, to make our project works, we are using Google Maps API to display the map. We are also using Google Places API to get the list of restaurants that matches the user uh, search criteria like uh, cuisine type, uh, radius, and rating. And we are also using Google Places API to get more details like photos about each restaurant in that list. These are the uses for external API in our project. And now Ismar is gonna talk about our database. So this is our schema database and I'll walk you through one of the features that you saw in the demo. So after you register an account is made using your username and from your account, you can do various things. So when Jordan favorited a restaurant, uh, the ID was taken from Google Place API and the object was mapped to an object with the same fields as our restaurant table. And if the ID was not already included in our database, we would add it. And then next, we would check the bridge table that we named favorite restaurant for the combination of our username and restaurant ID. And then once we add that combination, we successfully favorited a restaurant. So unfavoriting is a little simpler where we just have to check the bridge table and then remove that combination. Um, we handle all these validations and steps in the back end so that only one fetch call had to be made on the front end for both the favoriting and unfavoriting restaurant. Uh, now I'll pass it to Gasan who will talk about some of the challenges we face. Yeah, the team had two main challenges. The first one, like learning uh, Google Maps and Google Places APIs. Uh, in a short time, we had to go through documentation, watch many YouTube videos. Uh, one particular challenge was getting the details about each restaurant to display uh, correctly because we are making uh, many um, calls to the Google Places API to get the details about each restaurant and the responses come at different times and we had to synchronize our uh, React to display these uh, appropriately when they arrive. Um, but after like many tries and also getting advice from our instructors, the team was able to resolve these issues. Uh, the second challenge was collaborating on GitHub uh, because the project has many files. Um, we had to plan in advance so we don't get into conflicts, which takes time to resolve. Um, and, and we had like short time to finish the project. 
So these were the main challenges that our team had. And now Ismar is going to talk about our achievements. Yeah, so one of our achievements, I would say, was our open communication. We made every decision together as a team. Whenever we had to change our design or change our approach, we made sure to include everyone in on that decision. Uh, we constantly read and debugged each other's code. Uh, it was always beneficial to have another set of eyes. Um, we trusted each other, so we weren't afraid to ask each other to justify our code, uh, make suggestions, or ask each other for help. I think we should also be proud of uh, our implementation of the Google Maps API because it was a steep learning curve, and I think most of us felt more comfortable with the back end. And you kind of had the mercy of uh, Google Places API because it doesn't always yield consistent results. So we had to implement ways to protect ourselves. And now I'll pass it down to David to help make some any remarks. Sure. So as you can probably tell, and actually, Jordan, I wonder if you can uh, take us back to the database uh, schema. Um, you can tell that a lot of the things that are implemented here were implemented in the actual application. So for example, favorite restaurant, restaurant, cuisine, dish. Uh, but there are a few things that we planned to structure that we would for version 2.0 like to implement. So for example, favoriting a dish, you can see that kind of on the far left. Uh, there's a whole thing with side dish as well on the bottom um, that we would be another option that as you enter in your dish, you'd be able to kind of enter in its own side dish as well. Um, also app role. So, you know, there could be an administrator who would be responsible for making sure that appropriate comments were left or whatever, um, you know, and the correct restaurant information, perhaps if restaurant updated its information. Uh, but one of the other, one of the major things that we did kind of didn't get time to work on was the event. And the idea of this app in total originally was really to be a social media type presence so that you can imagine a user would be able to leave, you know, I went to this restaurant at this time on this day and other users could see that information and there would be interaction, possibly a chat function or at least a comment on comment function type thing. And we just didn't get the time to do that. Uh, but part of that also was, and you can see a uh, notification here, we were originally going to have uh, text notifications as well. So that uh, especially if you had already put down, if you had scheduled an event or a meal, so to speak, that you know, 10 minutes before, half hour before, uh, we would use Twilio to send you a notification that your meal is coming up, just so you know. Um, and I think that's actually one of the things that uh, kind of uh, going on to what Ismar said about things that would succeed. And we did a really good job, I think, developing a database that we could further build off of for future versions that if we had a little more time uh, or when we will have a bit more time, perhaps, uh, that we could further expand this application. Uh, that is the end of what we have to say. I want to just extend special thanks to Irina and to Brendan, our instructors, for helping us out enormously with this project and also throughout the entire uh, cohort. Uh, thank you also to my team members. And if anyone has any questions. Excellent job. And I will say, I really like that you guys walked through um, your database schema and talked about some of that, that complexity. It's amazing for um, you know, you, you see the front end of an application and things can look, you know, simple and clean. And then what's actually happening in the background is so complex and requires so much thought. Um, it, that was a, a really nice touch. So uh, thank you for sharing that. So we've got a few questions here. Uh, Matt would like to know, how many times did you adjust your data model and how impactful were those changes to your object model? So yeah, I think I can touch on this a little bit. Uh, when we first planned, we thought we put in a lot of thought uh, on how we wanted our database to look and how, what classes we need and what models we needed. And then as we worked and you know moved forward, we realized that we needed to add bridge tables or maybe this bridge table wasn't as complicated as we thought it was, or maybe it was more complicated and we had to adjust for that and add in extra fields and 
just that added a lot of complexity and ate up a lot of time. Absolutely. So I, I, I'm sure it evolved as the application evolved. Arena wants yeah. to know what was the most surprising thing that you've learned about the technologies that you used? And maybe we can each take a, a crack at this. So um, Ghassan, how about you start? What was the most um, surprising thing you learned? Yeah, like working, get, getting these uh, asynchronous call in the front end and make them work with React was the most challenging. Uh, calls to the Google Places API, handling the results and rendering them in React. This, that was uh, not easy and took many tries, but we enjoyed it and we learned a lot more uh, also about React through that process. Absolutely. How about you, Ismar? Uh, kind of to piggyback on Gassan, and when API didn't always give back uh, consistent results, as I mentioned earlier. So there's many times that we get like empty data and empty objects and it would appear on our um, app and we had to filter those out. So that was something I didn't expect that I had to handle using Google's API. Um, so what I found out is that actually, um, when you make a, a query and send a request that it returns the results as a bias and doesn't actually filter them based on what you wanted. So you have to do that manually yourself and uh, that ate up a lot of time. How about you, David? Yeah, kind of what Ismar was saying, just kind of watching the app evolve kind of on the basis of the Google API and seeing, you know, what options did we have, what options were possible, but maybe not necessarily what happened. This kind of goes back to the question about the database is that a lot of our, the evolution of this wasn't just because, oh yeah, we should do this for this, but also it was kind of like, we might have been wanting to go in a particular direction with the API, but then we might have run to a roadblock. So then it was kind of like with the time that we have, so let's work around that, uh, find uh, either a different solution to the same problem, or at least see if we can uh, work with another feature and kind of let the app uh, take a life of its own in terms of you know what can it provide. Absolutely, and last but not least, how about you, Jordan? Uh, I think the most surprising thing was um, understanding how the Google Maps API uh, makes its own fetches and realizing that it sort of limits us and trying to sync limits the amount of searches you can get at a time and then trying to sync that with our fetch calls and realizing, like, for example, trying to add things to the favorites table, we needed to validate that there's trying to implement the fetch calls in the front end, we realized we needed to do way more validations in the back end, which was challenging. Absolutely. Well, you guys did a, a fantastic job. You built a really cool app. Um, I, you know, it, it's fun to see something like that, that um, has a lot more dynamic searching and things like that than I would have, than I've seen in previous applications. So really well done, congratulations.